What a hell of a week. What's happening lads, welcome back to Cop Logic. Today we're going to be looking at Firmino's seemingly imminent move to Al Ittihad in the Saudi Pro League. So if somehow you've managed to miss this whole saga, a couple days ago, Firmino and his team were subject to an offer from Al Ittihad. It was then promptly accepted, as it's probably a lot of money. And since then there was murmurings and rumours of a bid coming in for apparently 40 million. And that didn't materialise until this morning. Of which it advanced pretty goddamn quickly. So quickly that while the rest of the Liverpool team flew to Germany, we decided to leave far behind. Basically so it could progress without any issues. Now, ultimately, we need to discuss a few key things. The first being a likely negative feeling that Fabinho, a crucial part in our team in title winning seasons and trophy winning seasons, is now leaving. And I agree, it's definitely the end of an era now. <laughs> And originally I thought he was safe from the chopping block. So many times JLS came out and said he was untouchable, he was the one player that would survive, guaranteed, that kind of thing, but here we are losing him. We had no other out and out number six, so we needed him to stay, and he's leaving. But playing devil's advocate, he is 29 and he didn't have the best season of his life last year. In fact, his drop off was pretty significant when you compare it to others. Plus tie them with the fact that the 40 million bid gives us near enough exactly what we paid for the player in 2018. We paid 44 million for him then, and we're getting 40 mil back, so we've only lost about 4 million pound. I do think that's actually quite important, as I'm usually quite critical of Liverpool's inability to make a decent return on their investments. And whilst it's not an ideal time to sort of have this opportunity arise to us, it's, it's the scenario we're in. There's no point really complaining about it. Another silver lining to look at here is apparently, according to reports, Saudi teams like to pay off their transfers in one go, so if that's true, we'll at least have 40 million in our back pocket by probably the end of the day. Certainly the end of the weekend, anyway. I do want to clarify, by the way, that it looks like Liverpool are looking at Lavia before any potential exit for Fabinho and Henderson. So I think it's pretty likely that we get Lavia and someone else. At least I wouldn't be shocked if we did anyway, and I'm hoping that's the case, to be honest. Now, don't get me wrong, Lavia's a top talent. He's got a very high ceiling, and I still want to get him. But I think the one thing he lacks most is experience. He hasn't got a lot of game time. And Fabinho is obviously our starting number six, so I think we're going to have to look at someone who can come in, comfortably play the minutes, and sort of gel into the team straight away. Meaning we might have to reevaluate our targets for the midfield. I'm obviously not the only one that's thought this, and there's been tons of names battered about this evening, and I'll go through some of them and just give a quick whether or not I think they're likely, questionable, or unlikely, and a quick reason as to why I think they are what they are. Lavia is likely because we've explored him a lot before the move, so I think he is a very real possibility of getting in. Sofyan Amrabat is questionable. We've been linked to him before, especially after the World Cup, and apparently we can do a deal quite cheap, but we've had no strong links since before this came out, basically. Calvin Phillips, unlikely, thank God. Probably older than what we want to go for, and he plays for City and doesn't even really play, to be honest, so I think that one's unlikely. Plus, I just don't rate him like that, to be honest. <laughs> Gravenberg is unlikely because he seems to be happy at buying now, whether they've promised the minutes or not, I don't know, but he seems to be happy and content there, so. Nicolo Barella is again, I also think, unlikely due to his age profile, and I think, although he's played as a defensive midfielder, I think he's definitely more offensive minded, so we probably want to stay clear from that. Thram is questionable, we've obviously put a lot of work into him at the start of the transfer window, but I think that was more because we, we wanted either him or Sabaslai, we've now got Sabaslai, so I don't think we'll go for him and then not being an out-and-out -out number six. Florentino Luis at Benfica is questionable. We've seen a few reported links to him, but nothing strong, nothing beyond monitoring. We're actually going to do a video on him uh, in the near future, so keep your eye out for that. But I'd say questionable. Paulinho from Fulham, I'd say is unlikely. We've been linked to him in the past, but I think he probably suffers with that same inexperience that, that Lavia suffers with. Coop Miners, questionable. He's been linked previously, and we know Pep's a big fan of him, but just no strong links to him as of late. Mano Kone is also questionable, which is odd because we did put a lot of work into him at the start of the transfer window as well, but I think his injury in the Euros caused a bit of concern and caused us to back away a little bit, but I'd still say there's a potential there because I know he was being looked at still afterwards, but we'll have to see how that one plays out. I think it's questionable still. Now, Andre from Fluminense, I think unlikely there's been no real links to the player for us, and he's probably also a bit too inexperienced as well. Chiamini also very unlikely, I think he's happy at Madrid and would probably cost too much. Kaiseido I would also say is unlikely because he's progressing with Chelsea and I think Brighton would ask for too much and we'd probably inside a bit more with Chelsea so unlikely in my opinion. So I reckon personally it's going to be Lavia plus another. I'd hope it's Florentino Luis but I'd also take Amrabat or even Mano Kone if the injury isn't too bad. But we'll see, Liverpool do like a stealth buy so it might be none of those names. Anyway so yeah Fabinho to Saudi Arabia. It's sad and I don't think anyone would have chose to lose him this summer 
not only was he crucial to us in any season we won silverware, but he was also just generally a really nice guy. He was that down to earth. I remember this occasion where during a preseason, he saw some Liverpool fans on holiday and I think he had a kickabout with them and then took them for dinner. I just think that's boss. Even, even his partner Rebecca, to be fair, she got involved with the fans and became like one of the one of the fans herself. She really took the ethos and the, the values and the message of Liverpool to heart and really embraced it. So it's an emotional end to say the least. And while it is an emotional and sad ending, like it is upsetting and you know, you're right, you are you're okay to feel that way. But it is the scenario we're in, and it's not a, it's not the worst case scenario. We can accept it and you know move on and make the most of it. At the end of the day, he's going to be going abroad to make a mad bang. So fair play to him. I genuinely wish him the best, and I want to thank him for his efforts for everything he's done for the club. So genuinely, thank you. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. But who knows? I might be back here a couple days doing one for Jordan Henderson. We don't know. But anyway, that's for another day. For now, if you don't mind liking this video, that would help us massively, and you'd be so sad for doing that. And let me know in the comments, are you a fan of this deal? Do you absolutely hate it or do you have mixed feelings towards it? Also, make sure you subscribe with the notifications on just so you get our video alerts. It sounds like it's going to be even more of an era-defining window, so you definitely don't want to miss anything. Anyway, see you in a bit, lads. What a transfer window, man. What a transfer window.